When the cares of this life come upon you, it's then that you're challenged on whether you can trust God. Well, today on Daily Renewal, we're going to talk about how to be confident that the Lord will lead us through. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Lyle, and welcome to Daily Renewal. We're going to continue where we left off from last episode, talking about Psalm 23. And uh, before we get into reading that again, I want to remind you uh, of who David is. And David was the one that wrote this psalm. Now, it's really important that we understand the background of, uh, of where David's coming from when he, when he wrote this psalm. Yeah, he was a king, and, and as, as being a king, he had the responsibility of all of this kingdom, all of Israel. But before he became a king, as a young boy, he was a shepherd. And even though he may not have had as many uh, responsibilities, and, and uh, you know, there's many references to sheep being like people, and the idea of a shepherd... Uh, is, is a lot like what he was doing as a king. He was overseeing people and directing people. Well, when he was a young boy, God chose to, to use the idea of him being a shepherd to train him in the things that he was going to do later on as a king. Now, as we come at this as David being a shepherd, it's really important that we understand that if anybody understood what being a shepherd was, it was David. So let's read Psalm 23 together today and let's look at what God has for us. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, as we've established, David uses the idea of a shepherd, and this is really important because we have to, again, remember that if anybody understands what it is to be a shepherd and the responsibilities that a shepherd has, it's David. So in understanding that, when he says here in the beginning that the Lord is my shepherd, he's saying, I understand and I give full weight to the fact in understanding shepherding, God knows how to fulfill all the responsibilities that come with being a shepherd. So he says this, he says, I shall not want. Now this is really important because he understands that as a sheep, the sheep are so uh, dependent upon the shepherd. The shepherd is the one that supplied all the needs for the sheep. So he was saying, I understand, God, that you are my shepherd. In other words, I submit myself to you, and I believe that you can supply all of my needs. This is key for us as a believer, because often in life, we try to find ways that we can kind of support our own needs. We want to depend on ourselves. We want to rely upon our own strength. And in being a Christian, one of the first things that we have to realize is that we have to not rely upon our own thinking and upon our own strength, but we have to give ourselves to God and rely upon Him, not on our own understanding. He goes on to say, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and He leads me beside the still waters. Well, this is really important, especially when you understand sheep. Now, as I look into the idea of sheep, one thing that we have to understand is for a sheep to lie down, uh, sheep just seem to be very anxious creatures. And for a sheep to lie down, they will only lie down if the conditions are conducive to them thinking everything's okay. There's many things that can come at sheep that cause them to be anxious and they won't lie down. So the idea of God being our shepherd and supplying our needs, a sheep will have to really be confident that God is doing that in order for him to lie down. 
And, and in previous episodes, we've talked about the fact that it's God's desire for us to have rest. You can't truly have rest if you uh, are, are anxious. You know, I was talking with a fellow pastor today, and he was talking about the importance of having a, a sabbatical. Now, what's a sabbatical? Well, often a lot of pastors, what they do is when the pressure comes on them in the, in the ministry, and that, believe it or not, that does happen. Most pastors do more than, than preach for 45 minutes on a Sunday. And, and, and often, you know, there's the cares and the weight of the ministry that comes upon them. So they take this thing, which is called a sabbatical, which is a time off. But I, I, I said to him, I says, you know, as important as sometimes those things might be, I will tell you that my experience is, is if, they, if you have a, a vibrant relationship with Jesus, if you're spending time in his word and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, the word of God is water to our soul. It's bread, uh, uh, the bread of life to us. And, and often the rest we receive is because of a solid relationship with Jesus that is constantly moving forward. And so the idea of God bringing us rest, uh, he takes away our anxiousness as we continue to have a vibrant walk with him. So uh, him leading us uh, to these places where we would not be anxious is very important. Now, the things that caused anxiousness within sheep, uh, I did a little bit of study on this, and uh, some of the things that caused anxiousness was number one, a sheep wouldn't lie down if there was friction going on with other sheep. Isn't it amazing how many times in life we may have things in our relationships that have caused friction, and for some maybe even listening today, some of those things have bothered you enough that they even affect your sleep. You know, we have to understand that God takes care of things in our life to the point where even some of these relationship frictions God wants to take care of these things so that, and it says that he leads us or makes us to lie down. He knows exactly what needs to happen in your life in order for these things not to be anxious uh, or cause us, uh, cause anxiousness in our life. So we have to submit ourselves to the shepherd as David did to uh, help us through those things. The second thing that I looked at as far as what caused friction uh, or, or uh, causes anxiousness with sheep uh, is uh, flies or parasites often would trouble sheep. And we're going to get into that a little bit uh, in, in probably either tomorrow or the next day about the anointing of our head with oil. Often what happens with sheep is there's flies that get into their ears and uh, that begins to cause problem, uh, problems within sheep. And isn't it amazing that for us, a lot of the problems that cause anxiousness in us has to do with things that come into our ears and make us anxious. Uh, also, a thing that made uh, sheep anxious uh, so that they wouldn't lie down, so they wouldn't experience rest, was when they were hungry. Uh, you know, and, and, and often, you know, when our needs aren't met, it's amazing how we become anxious. Well, David understood that as a shepherd, he was responsible to take care of these things in a sheep's life so that the sheep wouldn't feel, wouldn't feel anxious. And he says here, uh, he would bring them to green pastures and uh, he would lead sheep besides still waters. In other words, the shepherd was responsible to bringing the sheep to places where they could actually uh, attain rest. That was the responsibility that he had. And now he was saying, Lord, I understand that as a shepherd, you're doing that for me. So now I have the responsibility of a sheep to be obedient to you so that I can experience these things. And then it goes on uh, also in verse 3 to go along with this. It says, he restores my soul. Well, the restoration of a soul or your soul plays a major key in you being able to walk in rest or in peace. You know, in church today, we often don't talk about the restoration of the soul. This is something that up until just a few years ago, when I got involved with the uh, ministry that I'm involved with now, they spent a lot of time talking about the restoration of the soul. I realized, even after many years of being a Christian, 
that the restoration of my soul plays is a major key in having victory in my Christian walk. If you look at what the soul is, the soul is the part of man that is made up of his mind, his will, and his emotions. As much as we are saved in the day that we received Christ as our Savior, when we've repented of our sin and, and received uh, sins and received the free gift of salvation, our spirit man is now alive, but our soul is still being developed or renewed or reformed. Uh, what does that mean? There was a, 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 a place before the fall, where our soul, in other words, our mind, our will, and our emotions were right with God. But when the fall of man came, all of those things were not in order anymore. They were set apart. The man began to his, look for his own will, uh, his own thinking, and his emotions were affected by, by this world. And so the idea of being a Christian, we have to understand this is a key component to the Christian faith, is seeing our soul restored. In other words, our mind, the way that I think. You know, when I became a Christian now, I noticed that as I began to saturate myself with the Word of God and allowed God to speak to me, my mind began to change. My thinking began to change. I wanted to do things God's way, not my way. And often we come to a crossroads in our, our thinking where something that we thought maybe a past way of thinking tries to come in and the Word of God will come against that and bring a different way of thinking. And it's at that point that we have the decision to, to make. Am I going to allow the power of the Holy spirit to to uh have his way with me and change my way of thinking that's what we're talking about with the restoration of the soul there's a restoration that needs to play, take place in our way of thinking and it's also uh the thing that we'll notice is that our desires change uh, in other words, our will, what we will to do. I no longer uh, want to do things for, for my own sake, for my own benefit. I want to do things, uh, hopefully, that line up with what God wants to do. This, these are indicators that there is a progression in seeing our soul restored. And the last one, our emotions, the things we choose to love, the things we choose to hate, the things that, that bring us joy. Those things all begin to change when our our mind or, our, or sorry when our soul uh, is in the process of restoration many times today this is again is not covered in christianity in a lot of churches today but this is an absolute key is we need to see the restoration of our soul and that only happens when we offer ourselves up to the lord and allow him to bring a transformation to our soul through the word of god via the holy spirit and then he goes on and he says that he leads me, the shepherd leads me into the paths of righteousness. Now this is talking about the fact that now as a result of knowing God, we have to again trust him that he is leading us into the paths of righteousness. In other words, the paths of right standing with God. We can't do this in our own strength, in our own power, but we have to trust again. And, and I, I go... Go back to uh, the first verse. He says, I shall not want. God is the one that supplies all of our needs. And one of those needs is, is a, uh, a trust that God is the one who's leading us. We don't have to rely in our own strength. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. And why does he do that? Well, we see this at the very end of verse 3. Part of the reason or most of the reason is for his name's sake. Well, yes, you know what? He does these because it benefits us, because he loves us so much, but he also does this because he loves mankind as a whole. Jesus came, and the reason he came is he came because there was a sick, die, and a dead and fallen world that needed hope. And he came because he wanted all of mankind to be able to experience the reconciliation that came because of Jesus shed blood. Now, not everybody makes a decision to take the free gift of salvation, but we have to understand that the things that he's doing in our life, it started with what he did with Jesus, and he wants to bring change to our lives so that others would see that there is hope when we call upon the name of the Lord. And when we are those examples, 
Others hopefully would see that and they would say, you know what? If that can happen to, to this person, if that kind of transformation can happen with one, maybe it can happen with me. And the answer is absolutely. God desires to see transformation in anyone's life who will call upon the name of the Lord and he will believe on him. And that word believe, we often see uh, when we look at the Amplified Bible, uh, especially it talks about the word believe being trust in, adhere to, and rely upon Jesus. Do you trust in him today? Do you rely upon him for everything in your life? And are you willing to adhere to everything that God says that we should do and, 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 and embrace him for everything that he is? Well, if we do that, we're going to see transformation happen in our lives. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. Uh, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel, share the videos with as many people as you think will benefit from them. Also helps when you press the like button, uh, it, we can get the videos out to more people. You can also like us on Facebook and we're also on Twitter and Instagram. If you are in the Kamloops area, we would love to have you drop by River City Church. Having said that, God bless you and have a great day.